The Galaxy M series phones, they've always been about monstrous battery capacities, basically a lot of screen on time. It's never been about super performance or the best display or the best camera. They're meant for long lasting smartphone use, be it for watching movies or TV shows, or just taking a lot of photos and videos nonstop. So these phones have always been about, you know, for consumption of content and even creating it. The M33 is the latest addition to this M series. The good things are that it comes with One UI 4.1, a large 6.6 inch display with a 120 Hz refresh rate, Gorilla Glass 5 protection, a power efficient Exynos 1280 5 nanometer chip, and that with the massive 6000 mAh battery to give you nearly two days of battery life. And in terms of connectivity, it offers 12 5G bands, 4G dual volt, dual band Wi-Fi, auto data switching, and Wi-Fi calling. Now, from a design point of view, it looks very similar to the previous M series phones, but the back panel is a pretty interesting combination this time. It almost gives a very glossy look, but when you touch it, it's completely matte finish. What I'm trying to say is that it's got a shine, but with a matte texture. Now, this is the ocean blue color. There's another mystique green color that you could look into. It also has a 3.5mm headphone jack and a fully loaded triple slot SIM card tray with the option to expand storage by up to one terabyte. The whole thing has rounded edges and definitely feels heavy. It's quite loaded. And that's obvious because it's got a 6000 mAh battery snugged into this body. And trust me, for a 6000 mAh battery, it's actually quite thin. It does not have an in-display fingerprint sensor. Instead, the power key is the fingerprint sensor, which I personally prefer the most. It's fast, it's secure, and it's still got face unlock if that's your preferred style of unlocking. You've got a quad camera setup at the back with a 50 megapixel main sensor, 4K video recording, and an eight megapixel front facing camera. Now I'll show you some samples towards the later half of the video, so stay tuned. Also, the phone supports reverse charging. Since it's got a 6,000 mAh battery, you can use it to charge other devices. Just take a Type-C cable and then you can charge another phone or your earphones. I mean, 6000 mAh is almost like a mini power bank of its own. Now, it does support fast charging, which is good because it's a pretty big battery and you don't want to spend too much time charging it, but you don't get that in the box. Just the phone, the ejection pin and the Type-C cable. No protective film or cases either. The not so great things are probably the peak performance and the LCD display. Now I know LCD displays tend to get bashed a lot and quite rightly so because they're not as good as AMOLED displays. But the brief time that I've spent with the M33, it's not that great, but it's not that bad either. Also, this does not have stereo speakers. It's only the speaker grill at the bottom that outputs sound. The earpiece is not a speaker. Now, that display is a 6.6 inch LCD FHD plus screen with a 120 Hz refresh rate that really gives that smooth experience. The large display is obviously very apt for watching videos and even casual gaming. Not being an AMOLED display, the colors do look less punchy. Now, sometimes you may feel that the scrolling is not as smooth and that's just because things may not have loaded. So I believe some performance optimization would definitely help relieve that issue. But in terms of brightness, I think it's quite decent. I mean, here I am outdoors and watching a video in this lighting. It doesn't feel inadequate, but I'll agree. Having an AMOLED display on this phone would have been the most optimum pass to take, but maybe next time. All right, now jumping into the OS. So you get Android 12, One UI 4.1, and unlike any previous M series phone, this is not One UI Core 4.1. So this time you get quite a few inbuilt features on the M33, just like the A series phones. So you get features like link to windows, screen recorder, extra dim, uh, quick share, music share, NFC, secure folder, and even the Alt Z feature. And if you want to know more about this Alt Z or quick switch to secure folder feature, I've done a video on it. I'll leave it here in the top right corner. Check it out after you're done with this video. There's also something called as voice focus that you can enable during a phone call, which lets the other person hear you more clearly, even if you're in a noisy environment as it cuts the ambient noise. You also get the full version of Samsung Pay. There's also RAM Plus, so you can virtually increase your RAM and get more multitasking done by assigning more of your internal storage as RAM. It's also got auto data switching. So if you're using two SIM cards in the phone and one of the SIM cards is unable to connect to a network, it would automatically switch your phone's connectivity to the other SIM. And with Android 12 on the M33, you get more access to manage your privacy. So there's a privacy dashboard where you can view what permissions have been provided to which apps. And from within the permission manager, you can revoke permissions from apps as and when you want. 
The M23 also features the object eraser functionality. So if there's an unwanted object within your photo, you can simply draw around it and then click on erase and it will intelligently remove it from that area. And you can see the before and after given the fact that I did it very roughly right now. But yeah, it works very well. Unfortunately, there's still no support for always on display and no support for Bixby routine. So if you want that, you might want to upgrade yourself to the Galaxy A series. I also did not see any support for good luck modules. You can install One Hand Operation Plus and Nice Catch, but not the other good luck modules. And Samsung does promise you two years of OS upgrade on this phone, so you will get all the way up to Android 14 and four years of security updates. So this phone will get support from Samsung for at least four years, and after that, well, it's up to you how well you maintain it. Okay, now let's talk performance. It's powered by the Exynos 1280 chip. It comes in six gigs and eight gigs of RAM, and it supports 12 bands of 5G. But the Exynos 1280, that's where it gets tricky. See, it's not the most powerful chip in the segment, but it is one of the most power efficient chip. So, you know, it's built on the five nanometer tech and that really makes your phone run very optimally or more efficiently. So you may not get the most detailed gaming graphics, but the gameplay would be smooth. In other words, you may not get the most desired graphic quality, but it would be an optimum graphic quality. By the way, just like in the A53, this device too comes with power cool technology that keeps the heat under check and ensures that your phone doesn't become uncomfortably warm or hot. Also, because it's a 120Hz refresh rate, if you play games that run in 120Hz, they look really good. But yeah, speaking of graphic quality, I did go into Call of Duty game settings and I did not see the option to increase the graphic quality beyond medium. And that's because the game is trying to optimize itself for the most consistent gameplay. And that's true. If you look here, I'm playing Call of Duty and the gameplay is smooth. I mean, it is surely doing it at the cost of dropping the graphic quality a little just so that you have a smooth experience. But I really think a smoother experience and a consistent gameplay is more important than just having you know, temporary burst of high graphic quality, but just poor experience. So all in all, I think it's quite well optimized. So just like I said in the beginning, M-series phones and the M33 included is more to do with long lasting performance and not peak performance. Just like it's more to do with stamina and endurance and not raw power. So don't expect super fast performance from this phone. There are other phones in this segment that would do that for you. This phone is about balanced performance focused on maximizing battery life along with a really feature-packed software experience. Now, jumping into the camera. So it's got a quad camera setup and here are the specs right here in front of you. But I actually want to take you through the samples that I took uh, with all the lenses. So first is the 50 megapixel primary camera. It takes decent photos. They're not the best, but given the right lighting, it can take pretty average shots. Now, all of these photos are available for you to download so you can evaluate the quality all by yourself. Now, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of photos taken using the primary lens on the left and the ultra wide on the right. And I have to say ultra wide always tends to have better dynamic range and just slightly more pop. These are some shots that I took using the portrait mode and you can see that the subject is very nicely separated. The background is very, you know, effectively blurred uh, and very less aberration. But the colors do look a little washed out, but nothing that you can't fix with the right filters. And here you go with some selfies using the 8 megapixel front facing camera in the portrait mode under different lighting conditions with the sun hitting my face and in the background. And I did go ahead and take some shots using the macro lens, which is a 2 megapixel lens. So, you know, it's not filling the entire 4K frame of this video. And, you know, the shots are not as bad, but I think it's the 2 megapixel, which is really low quality. And that sort of makes it a little useless. Samsung also claims that the M33 can now take better low light photos than the previous generation of M series phones. And that's because of something called as temporal noise reduction. So basically, when the ambient light is low, the M33 would reduce noise and just result in a sharper, cleaner photos when it's nighttime. But I'm yet to spend more time with the phone and actually take some shots in the low light zone. So I'll keep updating the link in the description, which is the folder that will contain all those photos. So just check back in a few days. Let's also walk through various modes available in the camera. So there's fun mode if you like taking, you know, silly photos with filters and have some fun. There's portrait, photo, video. And if you go into more, you'll also see the macro lens that you can use. There's food, there's panorama, there's super slow-mo, slow-mo, night and single take. 
Also, by default, the video mode is set to full HD video recording, but you can switch to 4K video recording as well. And here's some 4K video sample that I very quickly shot. You know, this wasn't planned. I did not try to take any professional footage. It's all handheld and I just went ahead and took some shots just to show how the videos are handled on this phone. Also, if you point to the sky, it nicely adapts softly to that exposure. And then as you can see, it switches quite softly. And yeah, as you go closer to a subject, you can tap on the subject to quickly focus on what's important. And lastly, let's talk about that battery. And if I've not already emphasized enough on that 6000 mAh battery capacity, the M33 is all set to give you one of the best battery performance in this price segment. And it's not just that 6000 capacity. You combine that with the Exynos 1280 on the five nanometer tech, it's really power efficient. So under moderate use, you're easily going to get two days of battery life on this. Unless of course you binge watch TV shows or binge game on the phone, Two days, easy. And that's pretty much it guys on the Galaxy M33. Now I may have not answered a few questions that you guys might have, so feel free to ask me in the comment section and I'll get back to you ASAP. And if this video was really helpful to you guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all. Really helps the channel grow and sustain. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.